You mentioned mood there. What's the connection between blood sugar levels and mental health? Because I think, mm. again, even though we are making those connections now, I think often we don't recognize how correlated yeah. our diet and our mental health is. That's the reason I got into this in the first place. So when I was a teenager, I had an accident. I broke my back jumping off a waterfall. Had very intense surgery. I have lots of metal on my back now. And physically, I was fine because you recover fast when you're that young. Mm -hmm. But then my mental health started going really down the drain. So anxiety, depression, depersonalization. My, I felt like my brain was completely broken. I didn't feel like myself anymore. And I went on a journey to try to understand how to get better. And that's what got me studying biochemistry. That's what got me into genetics. And then almost 10 years after my accident, 10 years of darkness, I finally had my first clue. I was part of a pilot experiment. And during it, I could wear a glucose monitor. And I saw, Jay, that the days where my glucose levels were spiking and dropping a lot, my mental health was worse. Mm -hmm. And the days where my glucose levels were steady, my mental health was so much better. Mm. And this changed everything for me because I had been completely lost for the better part of a decade, trying to understand what the heck I could do to improve my mental health. Mm. And I was lost, let me tell you. And nobody said, oh, you should look at your lifestyle. But in that moment, I remember that day, I was feeling one of these episodes come on of depersonalization, which is this horrible mix of brain fog, feeling like a stranger in your own body. I mean, it's terrible. And I scan my glucose monitor and I see one of the biggest glucose spikes I had ever seen. And so I started putting two and two together. I said, wait a minute, is it possible that this glucose spike is actually causing this episode? Anyway, so that opened the gates really wide for me. I was like, wow, this is fascinating. And I started doing all the research I could. And I, I saw that I wasn't alone, that most people experience glucose spikes on a daily basis, even if they don't have diabetes. Mm -hmm. And that these spikes are correlated to all the things we spoke about and to mental health. Mm -hmm. So as I started managing my glucose levels, my mental health started improving. Mm -hmm. And so what's the connection? Well, the cells in your brain also use glucose for energy. And so you know those three things I talked about, the mitochondrial damage, the glycation, the inflammation, the insulin, your brain cells also feel these consequences of spikes. And we don't fully understand how the brain works, but we do understand that when these things happen in the brain, it's not good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we also know that glucose spikes impact tyrosine levels. And tyrosine is an important molecule that regulates our mood. I want to tell you about another really fun study. Yeah, Can I? Okay. Yeah, please. Fascinating. So bless these scientists. They're so amazing. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you what this study is. So scientists recruited... 200 married couples. Mm -hmm. They gave each person in the couple a voodoo doll representing their spouse. Wow. I know. They told the married people to please, over the next six weeks, put a pin in the voodoo doll every time your spouse annoys you. And then at the end of the six weeks, the scientists got all the voodoo dolls back with all the pins in them, and they measured the participants' glucose levels they found that the people who had the most irregular glucose levels had put the most pins in the voodoo doll representing their spouse. Mm -hmm. And that's where the tyrosine hypothesis started com coming up. They saw that being on a glucose roller coaster can impact how irritable you are, how you see those around you, how nice you are, how triggered you are by your spouse. Mm. So if you ever feel irritated, agitated, like, oh, it's so annoying, this person, I hate them. Well, maybe your glucose levels have something to do with it. So whether you're trying to improve irritability, hangriness, mental health, anxiety, depression, whatever, managing your glucose levels, again, is a key foundation in the house of your health. Yeah. And for me, like, it wasn't everything, right? After I managed my glucose levels, I had to go to therapy, do EMDR, do lots of other stuff. But it gave me a foundation that was so necessary as that first step. Yeah, well, I think what you're laying up there for us, and that's definitely what I've discovered in my own journey of mental health and well-being, is just that you're just making it harder for yourself when you're not using everything at your disposal. And I was definitely someone who had used mindfulness and meditation in order to master the mind, but I didn't realize how hard that was when your body was slowing you down. 
And actually, if your body was with you, the kind of revelations and breakthroughs you could have were limitless. Yeah. But when your body wasn't with you, or for some people, when their mind's not with their body, it slows you down and it makes everything so much harder. And I couldn't recommend that more to people. Like if you're someone who loves meditating and you love mindfulness, but you're not taking care of your body and you're not looking at your glucose levels or your sleep, mm. take a look at it. It's only going to make you a better meditator. And if you're the other way around where you're like, Jay, this, you know, the physical stuff for me is easy. I feel really fit and healthy. It's really important to add the other side as well because you have no idea how good you can feel. It's all connected. And to give you another example, um, I've been recently really into weightlifting. So mm. it feels really good. My body feels strong. And I've noticed also my mental resilience has improved mm -hmm. as my physical resilience has improved. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to manage stress better. I feel stronger. And that's because you train your nervous system. Your body and your brain are all connected by your nervous system, right? And so when you improve your physical health, your nervous system improves and your mental health improves as well. Mm -hmm. It's all it's all connected.